This program has been made possible in part by Welcoming Deborah Robeson, fiber expert, to the show. She's got a great, well informed opinion about all matters relating to fiber. Welcome, Deb. Hi, Winnie. So, I think that as knitters, you know, we often forget that what we work with starts somewhere else. With There's raw a fiber. beginning to the story. There is a beginning to the story. Starts with raw fiber, mm -hmm. which is pretty dirty. Um, it has a lot of different things on it, it has wool wax or lanolin and it has sweat and it has vegetable matter which has to be cleaned out. And that cleaning part is done usually for us as knitters, well mm -hmm. as spinners we do it ourselves, but um, for knitters it's often done at a mill. Mm -hmm. And the mill's goal is not to damage the fiber in that process, although they have to put it through a lot of chemical um, solutions to get the dirt out, to get the wax and, and to get the vegetable matter out so that we end up with a wool at mm -hmm. the end of that, ideally, that still has a lot of life in it, that has the luster, um, that feels really good. So walk us step by step through kind of the yeah. journey that that wool takes on its way to becoming a, a knitted piece. Okay, shorn off the sheep, mm -hmm. compacted into a bale, shipped across the world, mm -hmm. uncompacted, mm -hmm. thrown through lots of different vats with different cleaning solutions, uh, possibly subjected to acid to dissolve the vegetable matter, mm -hmm. crunched in rollers, carded. It's a really an amazing process. Um, it's fascinating. Um, one of the things about wool is that it is a living substance mm -hmm. um, and that liveliness ideally is retained mm -hmm. through all that processing, which is tricky. Manufacturers work hard to do that. Well, so say you don't have a gigantic factory in right. your house. Um, how would you, you know, I mean, I have dabbled in spinning a little bit, you know, and I, I've never bought wool quite in that form before, but I certainly have spinning friends who buy yeah. raw fleeces. And I, I do what, a lot of it. What, so, um, And I wash it in a special solution that is intended to work at relatively low temperatures and to be gentle on the fiber, mm -hmm. um, not to damage the scales, which can have some luster in them. It's really easy to damage the luster, mm -hmm. and yet is strong enough to get all of this off it so that it's clean. And why does it just water work? Um, okay, because the wool wax is not water soluble. Oh, because it's wax. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, and it's not water soluble. It needs help to get off there. Fascinating. Without and damaging it. Once you get to this point, you know, where this is almost ready to be spun, right? That is or ready, to, is ready yeah. to be spun. Yeah, we can spin that. Yeah. Um, how would you care for this? Okay, you wash it in something that doesn't need to be quite as strong. Mm -hmm. Um, that still is going to maintain the liveliness. Now, when we think of hair, people's mm -hmm. hair, um, and we do things like perming it or dyeing it or bleaching it, it can grow out again. We can, we can reclaim mm -hmm. that liveliness. This has been cut, and it is what it is, and any damage we do to it is going to mm -hmm. be permanent. So we need, we need to take care of it by using appropriate washing solutions. So you don't need to use something quite as intense. Not as, as intense as that, mm -hmm. nope, because all it needs to do then is get off like the daily wear dirt. It doesn't, yeah. have, to, it doesn't have to take care of the, the non-water soluble pieces. So there are kind of cleaning agents for that kind of? There are, yes. That's great. Yeah. And then once it's actually knitted, you yeah. know, or crocheted and turned into a finished piece, mm -hmm. you know, what do you, would you use the same kind of For thing? For the washing, you would mm -hmm. use the same thing. Um, there are also rinses that you can use mm -hmm. that can reduce static mm -hmm. and that can actually... Oh, that's great. I mean, I live, I mean, we both live we both in a very dry yeah, climate. We yeah. do, and static's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So it's really good to be able to do that. Um, also, I've had some experiences lately where I'm using the same rinse that I've been using, but I'm using it on very coarse wools. Mm -hmm. And I've found that it shockingly softened the hand of something that I was working oh, with recently. Yeah, so I'm gonna experiment a lot more with that, but my sense is that if you use the right sequence of things, um, you can broaden 
the use of particular fibers. You can kind of finesse the feel of them. And you can definitely yeah. finesse the feel. That's really yeah. interesting. I mean, it won't change it in a totally different fiber. Well, but. what shouldn't you use? I mean, I know that sometimes when I travel, I use shampoo in the hotel sink to wash a sweater. Right, and I've done that too in a pinch. Um, but at this point, I actually take an appropriate mm -hmm. solution with me because shampoo is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, it lathers a lot and is hard to rinse out. Um, it's a whole lot easier just to take the right thing along. Mm -hmm. Um, I also used to use dishwashing detergent. It's formulated to take dried egg off of stainless steel and is too harsh. You don't quite need that for a sweater. You sweater. don't. You don't. Yeah. In the short term, it works really well, but I like my hand knits to last. I want my, my daughter to wear them. Well, and what about just laundry detergent? I mean, why? That's really harsh. Plain old laundry detergent was meant to do something else. Well, so really, you want to take care of your wool, clean it in the right way with the right thing. To as and as keep gentle it. as you can get, still mm -hmm. strong enough to the, do the job, and that means something that's been formulated. So what can damage wool? A number of things can damage it, although it's really sturdy. Um, the wrong pH, so mm -hmm. either too acid or too alkaline. In the cleaning solution. In cleaning, yes, mm -hmm. that's, that's the primary risk. Uh, too much heat. Mm -hmm. So you want to use lukewarm water? You want, yes, ideally. Uh, sunlight, mm -hmm. so don't dry it in direct sun. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Deb. Thank you, Annie.